Two years since the release of Microsoft Flight Simulator and three years since it was announced. Really hard to believe that amount of time has gone by. Of course, over the past three years, a vast amount has changed within the entire world. It's basically a very different place. But we're not here to talk about that. We're here to look at Microsoft Flight Simulator and how that has changed over the past two years. It means then that this is going to be one of those rambling videos where I just discuss Microsoft Flight Simulator, its history, where it's going, and my general feelings towards it. Just a heads up then in case that's not really your type of video, but for those of you who do enjoy that type of video, I hope you stick around. So it's been a very, very busy two years for Microsoft with the Flight Simulator and of course Asobo, the studio behind the development. On the screen right now, you can see some of the footage that was revealed by Microsoft when the title was announced. And to this day, it looks extremely impressive. It's very easy to see then how this title captured the imagination of so many people. The second anniversary then for Microsoft Flight Simulator is the 18th of August. Incidentally, that's also the exact same date that the next developer Q&A is taking place, so that's early next week. Now, during that time, the audience for this game has built very rapidly. And whilst neither Sobo nor Microsoft will talk about player numbers, it's clear that Microsoft considered this title to be hugely successful. It initially released on PC in 2020 and then hit consoles in 2021. This year, it arrived on cloud platforms. Throughout that entire time, it's been extremely clear, very clear, that Microsoft have huge ambitions for this title, and yes, they've worked very hard on it. That's not to say that everything is perfect. There are still a number of problems, a few quite significant outstanding ones, specifically on console platforms, as well as with VR. Overall though, the studios are making great headway with getting the problems fixed, as well as adding new content and improving the overall sim. Of course, this is half the course when it comes to live service titles. And don't be mistaken, Microsoft Flight Simulator is very much a live service game. But it's one that, in my opinion at least, gets extremely good support. It's very hard actually to look at the game market and find any other titles out there that get similar type of support. There's been a vast number of updates for the title over the past couple of years. I think we're up to World Update 10 already. And there's this 10th sim update coming on the uh, well, later this month. So in total, that is 20 major updates. For those of you who are new to the sim or may not be aware, world updates are essentially content updates. They're updates whereby Microsoft update the environments within the sim itself. This can include things such as overhauling the entire countries, improving terrain, and introducing new photogrammatic cities. Sim updates, meanwhile, are generally about improving the sim itself. So this can mean improving existing planes, it can mean improving the simulation side of the sim, it can also mean introducing new technological features such as the upcoming DLSS support, multi-monitor support, or previously a VR support. Naturally, it's impossible to talk about the game's updates without also talking about the future of the game. Fortunately, Microsoft are very good about this as well. On the screen right here, you can see the roadmap for 2022. There's a few parts missing from here, the July and June updates. At that June update, I think the surprise was the Pelican, the spaceship of the dropship from the Halo series. Meanwhile, later on in the year, you can see we've got a bunch of other world updates and sim updates, not to mention the gliders and the helicopters coming as well. And also in the fall, there is another surprise. This means there's a little over four months left in the year, but also a significant amount of content still to arrive. It means that, for me at least, a big part of what Microsoft Flight Simulator is all about is the way that the sim is supported and the number of updates and new content that it gets over time. This is a huge, huge part of what the sim has come to represent. To me at least, I'm not sure about how, the, how other people feel about that. Do let me know your thoughts and feelings on that particular aspect in the comments section below. I honestly think that all of these updates and the way Microsoft tend to handle the game and the wonderful support from the developers themselves, along with those Q&As, has built a really, a really impressive community around the sim. This has grown a whole lot over the past two years and continues to grow still. Now, it's a very welcoming community and one which is more than happy to help players help new simmers get to grips with the complexities of flight sims. It's not really an easy thing to pick up. But if you put the hours into it, if you put the time into it, it is extremely rewarding. That said, I am completely aware that not everyone is totally happy with the way the sim is at the moment. 
And naturally, some people are more frustrated about this than others. Some of these frustrations then seem to revolve around long-standing issues. In some cases, this can mean a crash to desktop. In other cases, it's aspects of the sim that simply refuse to work. But I said, whilst I completely understand these frustrations, it does seem that Microsoft are very much aware of these, and as such, over the past few months have changed their approach to the way they are releasing the uh, next few updates. Specifically, these are getting longer periods in the beta process and getting much longer testing. Sim Update 10 is a great example for this. It's been in testing now for quite a number of weeks, actually. Hopefully, that means when it is finally released, it will be in a very good shape. Time will tell on that one. Another problem I occasionally see mentioned is that some people feel the graphics have taken somewhat of a downgrade over the previous few years. Now, this isn't something mentioned by absolutely everyone, but it is something mentioned by, you know, a reasonable number of people, and I feel as a YouTube content creator, I'd be somewhat remiss if I didn't mention that these type of comments that some people are mentioning. One specific example is the clouds. Now, as you've seen throughout the footage on the screen right here, all of this is pre-release footage, by the way, and in my opinion, the clouds in this old footage looked absolutely exceptional. Now, I really did at this point tie with the idea of doing a comparison here, comparing the pre-release footage to existing footage. However, this is a very difficult thing to achieve. It means you've got to film in the exact same locations that Microsoft filmed in and also match the time of day, year and weather patterns they had established during the capturing of this particular footage. And without knowing those details, it really does render that type of comparison a very well, pointless thing to do, something that's quite unfair. Nevertheless, here is some footage of clouds as they exist today in the beta for Sim Update 10. So there seems to be some changes over the years with the clouds, but overall I think they still look really good. Either way, do let me know what you think about this in the comments section. Now, another really interesting thing that seems to have come about over the past few months is Microsoft and Sobo's renewed interest and renewed focus on the simulation side of the game. Early on, when it comes to Microsoft Flight Simulator, it was very clear that Microsoft and Asobo weren't really going to focus on study-level planes. This, as per tradition, was going to be left to third-party developers. This is all set to change with the Airbus A310, which is set to be released with the arrival of the 40th anniversary edition of the Sim. This will include a plane which could be considered to be a study-level. The plane is being built by third-party developers in eBuilds, but it's going to be included with the sim with the update for free uh, due to a partnership with Microsoft. The same is also true for the G1000. This is being upgraded by working title to the NXI 1000. So all in all, a lot of progress is being made on the sim in many different areas. Some of it quite surprising actually. Now when it comes to next year, 2023, very little is known about the direction that the sim is going to head in. The big headline features for this year have certainly been helicopters and gliders. These are due to arrive a little later in the year. So what comes next year, what can Microsoft possibly add after all this, remains a complete mystery, but one I'm certainly looking forward to seeing. At any rate, that is some of my thoughts about the past two years of Microsoft Flight Simulator, along with where it's all heading. As I said right at the start, a bit of a rambly video, but I hope you enjoyed it nonetheless. As always, thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys and girls next time.